Today we're going to be building an absolutely epic PC, but it's not going to be any standard build. This is going to be Razer themed. Now you may have noticed on the channel that I've covered the Razer Hambo, which was their first step into PC hardware. Razer also kindly sent over the ASRock Razer Edition motherboard as well, and we've got a 16 core processor to go in that board. Then everything will be fitting into the Tomahawk chassis. It's going to be an absolutely monstrous build. I think we need to stop waffling now. I'll run you through the other parts as we go, and let's get building. So like I usually do, I'm going to install everything I can onto the motherboard and then we'll get that into the case. And like I mentioned, the motherboard was the Razer Edition. This is actually the ASRock X570 Tai Chi Razer Edition motherboard. 16 phase power design. And you've got three Gen 4 M.2 slots. It is AM4. I haven't seen anything for AM5 with the Razer Edition yet, but obviously it is an older platform. So you do have a bit of a limitation with upgrade pass. But we do have a whopping 16 core 32 thread processor the AMD Ryzen 9 5950X to go in this, which is certainly no slouch, even though it is an older platform. So we've literally got nothing to worry about in terms of performance, absolute monster. So let's get this open and installed. Obviously you can see it's a fresh box directly from AMD. No cooler included with this one, but of course we'll be using the Razer Hambo. Boost clock of up to 4.9 gigahertz on this processor. So it may be the old generation, but it's certainly very fast. So let's open up our socket and install this. Obviously 90 degrees to the right for AM4 and slide that down and lock it in. We've also got a couple of pills that I'm going to do before we actually install this into the case. Here we've got some chroma RGB zones on the motherboard as well, which will obviously show you when it's all lit up. We've also got a pill on the back. Let's just do this one. There we go, loads of nice I.O. on this board. So from memory, I've gone for Team Group Nighthawk RGB. This is a 16 gigabytes kit, we've got two eight gig sticks. Now Razer said some non-RGB memory, but I thought we'd give it some RGB as you know, we want to kind of go for the full effect. So I hope you don't mind Razer, um, but thank you anyway. So we'll just line up the notches for this. We're going to go slots two and four and click it in. Certainly easier to get DDR4 lined up than uh, DDR5 is because the notch is a bit further down, but that's all installed. So for storage, we've got a Samsung 980 Pro. This is a PCIe 4 NVMe SSD. We've got a one terabyte version here. And we're going to install it into our top slot, which is Gen 4. It's had to grab an iFixit kit to open this because they've got a star on their PCI slots. It's got thread lock in there as well. A little bit excessive. So let's install this. So just on the right hand side, in at 45 degrees, clip that in. Then on the piece of metal, we've got a thermal pad to take the cover off and then we'll use the cover to actually screw down our SSD as well. So installing those again. So these screws have got kind of two purposes there, one to hold the SSD in and the heat sink as well. Now we're going to get our Hambo back plate on and we can look at the case. So as I mentioned I've already covered the Hambo on the channel if you want to check that out I'll put the card on the screen. Now we've got the 240mm version but there is a 360 as well. It's also got a chroma pump cap and also the fans are RGB as well. But we do need to do a little bit of adjustment to our board. We're going to still use the same back plate, but take these clips off that come as standard. So first of all, we need to change the bracket that's on the pump. So that's the AM4 one, rectangular. We've got the AM4 standoffs, and then we will need four thumb screws. So we just take these brackets off. For anyone that's wondering, I'm actually working on a full install guide for this as well. I just need to record a couple of extra parts because I've included Intel and AMD on there all into one video. It's just a lot of steps you have to go over when trying to cover every platform. So that should be up soon, so get subscribed and ding the bell so you didn't miss that. So those are our generic mounting clips taken off. We've still got the back plate there. Then we're just gonna look for these posts that have a little kind of cover over the top, then screw these in their place. You can just screw these in hand tight as well as no need to wrench them down. So out of the box, this is how your pump will look. You will have some pre-applied thermal paste, but as I've said, I've used this already, so I don't have any on mine. Just need to take off this cover and then rotate to the left or anti-clockwise to take that bracket off. And then we need to get our AM4, put it back in the same position, and then go clockwise just to lock it in. So now that's ready to be installed. I have got my fans on my radiator already. If you're stuck with that, just refer to the guide. It's quite simple to do. And then we're ready to actually mount this on. So all I need to do is put a bit of thermal paste on. If you're using a new hand bone, you've got the pre-applied thermal paste, and obviously you don't need to add any extra. I'm just going to use some Mock Tour because it's what I always use for testing. P-size blob will do fine. And then we're going to put this with the hoses coming out the right-hand side down onto the IHS. Make sure we've got the right threads, which are more the inner ones when we're using it on this platform. And then we're just going to put our thumb screws on lightly to start. So we've got one on the top left, and then we're going to go for the bottom right. So we alternate to apply even pressure, top right, 
and then bottom left. So now they're done up thumb tight, we can now screw them in. So again, we're gonna go for top left, bottom right, top right, bottom left, and then slowly repeat a little bit at a time till they're fully seated. So now we've got the cooler all installed onto the motherboard. Now we can look at the case and get that ready to put the motherboard in. As I mentioned, the case, this is the Razer Tomahawk, has got some underglow lighting, also lighting on the little logo at the front. Uh, you can get it in an ITX version as well if you want a smaller form factor, but I think for the majority of people, ATX is gonna be the way to go. And if I just take off the dust filter on the top, magnetic as well, that will reveal where we're gonna install our AIO. You can do up to 280 mil in the roof and also 360 in the front, but as I've got A240, we'll be using that in the top uh, for this case. So panels are really easy to take off as well. Just pop open, I've got a magnet just to make sure it doesn't go anywhere, and then they slide off. So really easy to remove and work on the case. I'll do that for the same on the back, just pops up and then again slides off. We've also got a little power supply basement as well. And in that cage, we have got our screws and mounting hardware. Just going around to the front to show you this bit, but the front panel just pulls off from the bottom. That's got push pins on there as well. So when you pull the front of the case off, you're not gonna rip any connectors or headers. Here you can see the mounting support that we've got for our front fans. You can do up to a 360 mm radiator, like I said, you can do two 140s. I think I'm gonna put two 120s in the front and then the last remaining fan from my triple fan in the back. So we've got chroma all the way through. I think that'll look nice. We're not gonna put any hard drives or anything in the basement of the power supply area. So there's not gonna really need any ventilation. Razor also have a PWM hub as well. If you wanna put all your fans into one little box and control it by Synapse. I'm not gonna have enough headers by the time it comes to actually installing everything. So I'm just gonna use splitters for my fans, but this does give a great option if you wanna control everything in Synapse. One other thing I will be using though is the Chroma hub. So I can put all of the fans into this and then control it in Synapse, make things nice and easy rather than doing like a daisy chain on every plug. Can get a little bit confusing. So just one simple plug for each fan make things nice and easy. Take this panel off on the back. Those cable management covers are really great. Obviously makes things a lot easier and you don't have to go really you know, tight with zip ties and everything like that. You can just put the cables in a nice kind of alignment and then put the cover over. Saves a lot of extra hassle. Also it's worth mentioning that these also have a daisy chain on the end as well. So you're not actually required to use the razor hub. It's just there to make things a little bit easier. So I'm getting these in position. Looking good, taking shape the one on the back already installed and then just a couple extra for the front so now we can see inside of the tomahawk we have got a drive cage here we can push that along a little bit to give us a bit more space for our power supply but now let's get our motherboard in and screwed down so i'm gonna lift this by the pump because that's plenty strong enough and then get it down and lined up and that was really easy i'm gonna put our aio just to the side for the minute and then we'll find our mounting screws in the box. Little 632 threads. This motherboard has got a center peg as well, so you know where you're gonna be lined up. Makes things really nice and easy when companies do that in their cases. Now it's just a case of putting in some more screws. One thing I'm gonna do now is take the EPS 8-pin connectors and install these into the top left of the board. It's gonna be really difficult otherwise once we get that IO into the roof. So I'm gonna do this now to save a bit of faff in the future. These should be nice and easy to install as they're really easy to get to at the moment. So they're installed now, and we'll pass those through to the back of the case. This is just a general thing that they're difficult to get to, so if we can uh, save a little bit of hassle now, then it's well worth doing. For anyone wondering as well, I'm using an NZXT C1000, would use a Razer Katana, but they were quite difficult to get samples of for the UK, so that's why we're using that one for this. But of course, if you want to, you can go for the Razer power supply and make everything match. So I passed all of the fan cables through. Now we can line this up. Just kind of tuck those in as we go. I'm gonna to go to try and just push our cables down a little bit and then install this into the roof, something a little like there. We have got some offsets as well, so it's easier to get this cooler in with tool around, like we're actually using. See where we want to install it. So I'm gonna say about there. Then we've got some screws with washers that came with the hambo that we can screw in. I'm just gonna do one at each end, then we can let go. And it makes life a lot easier than trying to hold it and screw it in all at the same time. 
So our OEO actually has got a splitter for three fans, so I can put the additional 120 that's for the rear onto the AIO one and let the PWM control that. So I'm just going to put this to the side and we can look at our power supply. I've got a PCIe cable on here, it's got two eight pins which will be for our graphics card. We've got a Molex which will be for our Razer Chroma hub, then a 24 pin. We've got the additional eight pins for our EPS connections that I put through earlier. I'm going to mount this fan side down as we have got a dust filter in the back of the case so any fresh air that's drawn up from the bottom will be nicely filtered. So I'm going to put this in there now and come around the other side to get it screwed in. So I've just laid this down to a little bit of cable work before we actually do anything more. Um, this case has got you know, quite a lot of space. You've got a decent amount of gap between the panel um, and the actual motherboard tray. So I'm going to do what I can now. So I'm going to push through our 24 pin, also the PCIe 8 plus 8 for our graphics card. That can be ready for later. So I'm actually going to install this hub upside down so the cables are at the bottom of it to make things a little bit easier and more tidy than going up and then back down. And then we're just going to screw it in with some 632 thread screws, actually the same ones that I used for the motherboard earlier, just installing it like you would any two and a half inch SSD. So then that can just go back into the SSD mount like that. Put the thumb screw in, fairly short cable to go up to the motherboard, which will be our USB 2 header. And then we've got a Molex for power, which is the one that I've already installed. So that can just go onto there. Then the case actually has some SATA power for the lighting. So that's this connector here. And I've got a SATA to Molex adapter. So I don't have to use an additional like three or four SATA plugs on my power supply, which will obviously mean more cable management I could just use a single Molex. So that's pretty much the premise. We need to plug in some other things like USB headers and 24 pin on the other side, um, but it does look a lot worse than it is. Once you segment it out, it does make a lot more sense. So for example, we've got all the RGB, so that's the rear fan. We can just plug those into the hubs like this. Just a little bit of cable management with some zip ties, and then that's the worst of it done. It wasn't actually as bad as I thought it would be doing all that cable management. It just looks like a lot, but once you, like I said, segment it out, it becomes a lot easier to work with. So now we can move on to our graphics card and then we're actually pretty much done. The graphics card for this build is the Gigabyte RTX 3080 Ti. This is the Gaming OC 12 gigabytes edition. This has got a 1710 megahertz core clock over the standard 1665. It's also got 10,240 CUDA cores, which would make rendering and editing and things really quite simple. Very tempted to put this in my PC. Let's get this absolute chonk installed. As you can see, very long. And then we've got the two 8-pin connectors on there. So let's just take off the little cover. So we're going to remove the second and third PCI cover in our case. There's a little cutout for your screwdriver to go through, but from the angle I'm at, I'm just going to do it to the, to the side. That's one, one, two, coming out with the screw. So we'll take our card, just pull the hoses out of the way for the minute, open the latch already. Line her up, nice solid click. We'll put a little bit of upward pressure just to make sure any sag is avoided. And there we go. So just connect our power cables up. So I've used this previously for some six pins, but I need to push those together to get the eights. Just need to make sure they're nice and tucked in allow us the full 8 pin. Clips in. I want to push any cable back through the gap. So because I've already done all the cable management and plugged everything on the other side, it's now time to just plug it in and see if it posts. We've got clear CMOS light on the back. It's not always good. This is the first time I've actually done this. So, oh, nice load of chroma RGB already. So that's always a good sign. So now let's press the power button. Oh, nice. Okay, we've got some RGB to start. We've got fans inside now. Not yet. Don't forget we have got the RGB hub, which may be something that we actually need to configure before we get any illumination from those fans. AMD CPUs can actually take a couple of times around to actually train all the uh, caps and things, so it may take a little while. So we have got Ryzen 9 5950X 16 core processor running at 3400 MHz as the base clock. We've got 16 GB of RAM, two 8 gig sticks. We're going to go to OC Tweaker now and go down to Load XMP. I'm going to say Profile 1, which was 3600 megahertz, class latency 18, 1.35 volts. So that's what our memory is rated for. F10 to save and then exit. So now the system is up and running. I need to install Windows, get all of our games and things on there as well. So we're going to have to do some benchmarking. I'll be back with you in a few seconds, but to me, it will be multiple hours. 
So I wanted to show you some RGB effects that we have in the Razer Synapse software. This is really the best that I could do in terms of positioning to show you all the fans. But on the home page, you'll see we've got our Razer adjustable controller, the ASRock X570 Chi-T Razer Edition motherboard, so we can control the backlighting and things on there. Of course, the Hambo. I've got the Tomahawk ATX case, so you can change the lighting on the front and also on the little bottom strip along here, you can just see at the bottom. And then I've also got a keyboard, which is Black Widow as well, but we'll be looking at what we can do for the case for this one. So first of all, I've got all of my fans installed. We've got 18 LEDs on each, so I've set that. And uh, you have also an additional space if you want to add an additional one anywhere. If we go to the lighting module, we can adjust this manually. So we've got some quick effects, which are all the ones that you expect from Razer. So we've got some breathing. Starlight's quite a nice one. That will then just go onto those fans. You can also press this button here, which will apply it to all the other Chroma devices in the PC. So we've got some starlight going on the motherboard now as well. If we go onto something that the pump top supports as well, such as Wave. So now we've got rainbow galore. So you can see the underglows all go in for the rainbow effect. Motherboard, fans, even the pump top, everything going. So that looks really cool, actually. I do like how that looks. Not everyone might like that as it is quite kind of in your face. So I think Spectrum Cycle on all of the devices, I think will look quite nice. Just a slow fade between each effect. I think that looks quite good. More subtle as well. So much like the hub, we've got similar controls to the ASRock motherboard. So we've got an LED strip and that's got 20 LEDs on each part. And of course you can customize each one to whatever you fancy. You've also got options to turn down certain headers as well. So if you've got anything plugged into the addressable five volt, you can adjust that here as well, rather than going into separate software. The Hambo's got its own landing page as well. Gives you some detailed statistics about your PC. So the current CPU temp, any fan speeds and things like that. Mine's registering zero, but that's just because I'm using direct powered fan splitters, so don't worry about that. Yours will show up properly. Then you've also got your lighting tab. Again, you can customize the AIO separately or with everything else that works with Synapse. So Dirt 5, we're going for the ultra high preset with 1440p like we pretty much do for any graphics card we do benchmarks for. And then we're gonna run the benchmark and see what kind of results we get. And as a quick side note, I am running a OBS recording in the background, so that will reduce the frames just by a couple, but I just wanted to make you aware. So Dirt 5 gave us an average of 130.5. Now we are running ultra high preset, of course, so that is doing very well with our 3080 Ti. You could drop those settings just a little bit if you wanted to run the 144 Hertz monitor or maybe 165, but for an ultra high preset, the 3080 Ti is certainly doing very well. So for Cyberpunk 2077, we do run a high ray tracing preset. I will do a before and after with DLSS just to see how much it does benefit but I do like to get an idea of raw performance before we do that, as we're not using DLSS or anything like that. So it's going to be a, you know, a slog, but we are around about 33 frames a second at the moment. Let's see what we can do with DLSS. So now onto a balance preset and we're up to 65. So we're certainly getting a you know, console kind of frame rates, but again, we are pushing this pretty hard with ray tracing and things like that as well. Cyberpunk will be the most demanding game that we'll test today, but considering the fact this is actually ray traced and we do have a high preset, it's looking very nice and still with that DLSS balanced, giving us a pretty decent frame rate. Of course, you can always turn that down if you want higher frames and then go on to a performance for DLSS to really crank those frame rates. So of course this remastered have gone for a very high preset with ray tracing off just to see how we get on. Can always turn that on later on if you want to try it out. Same with DLSS as well. You usually get quite a big benefit from that in Crisis. So we can see how uh, it'll affect in a minute. Let's just try not to die. Um, uh, that was quick. Blimey, I think that was one of my quickest deaths yet. Um, but we are sitting around 100 frames. Let's just turn it on. DLSS and see what kind of benefit we get from that. So let's have a look. 130 frames there. So it's a little bit of a dip from the action. Um, actually sucking at this. Trying to look at the frame rate at the same time. Um, it's about giving us a oh, good 20 frames there. That was a decent jump. And that was 30. During the action, it does drop down a little bit. Um, but of course there's a lot of going a lot going on, a lot of textures and things. So that's kind of to be expected. But for the majority, it's still sitting around 140 frames. So do get about a 50 FPS boost from DLSS, so not too shabby. So again, reiterating the 144 Hertz monitor option that I mentioned, you can of course run a very high preset when using DLSS, 
and get some nice high frames but yeah keep the game looking nice as well so for far cry 5 we are absolutely cranked to what we possibly can do you can see all of our settings there as well we've got v-sync off motion blur is also off we'll run the benchmark for this one and see how we get on so it seems far cry 5 is a little bit tougher for that graphics card we've got a high of 90 frames for that one but again we were running the ultra presets and everything cranked up so you need to take that in consideration of course you can always bring those settings down a little bit for some higher fps anywhere near 100 frames a second gives you a nice battery frame rate anyway so that's still pretty good so the last game i'm going to do is apex legends so i'll just go over here grab one of these and we shoot this thing but average around 200 frames so even the one percent low is about 150 160 frames so it's not going to be one you need to worry about i don't think it's going to be a solid performer even when absolutely cranked so looking at our Cinebench results, we've got a CPU score of 20,756. This is a piece of software that you can download and test yourself. It is absolutely free, so you can do some comparisons to kind of what build you're running at home at the moment. As you can see, we've got third on the rankings below, and we actually got a 6,000 point advantage over the same cores and threads that a Threadripper 1950X would give us. So really great performance and a high temperature there of 86.8 even though it's just a 240 it's still doing a very good job considering we're running a 16 core processor both of those tests will also run with both side panels on and we had a room temperature of 27.4 giving us a maximum delta of 59.4 so very good performance even with a 240. So round to the warmest part of the room and on quite a warm day as well but nevertheless we'll get you a little conclusion so been very impressed with the performance especially the 16 core processor has done very well and i've also been surprised with how well that 240 AO has done considering it is a hot chip with such power as well going through it in terms of the razor theme we were going for the hub especially makes the life a lot easier than trying to daisy chain every fan together just put that onto the ssd slate plug all the fans in and it just pops up straight onto synapse so that certainly saves a lot of faff there as you can see it looks very good we've gone through the rgb and everything like that i love the illuminated front logo on the case um, i might actually do a review with this tomahawk if anyone's wondering let's see how it holds up in 2023 kind of thing if anyone's wondering about buying it still so if you'd like to see a review then do let me know and i shall make it in terms of graphics card temperatures we saw a high of 71.6 so with the delta of the room it's about 56 degrees so fairly cool for that as well we did test everything with the side panels on it's just open just to show as a kind of final presentation um, and for the synapse as well of course you want to be able to see into the case when you do put the side panel on that is very smoky and you can see it makes the rgb quite difficult to see if you want to make it stand out a little bit just the white led strip um, going along the top and down the side would look great just to help things just a bit more illuminated inside other things to mention of course you can get the katana power supply if you want to go everything razor that's everything that they currently do at the moment is in there minus the katana so that is just the one thing that i was missing but like i said it was difficult to get samples i'm looking forward to seeing what else razor do for the hardware side as well i'm sure they could do like an rgb ssd or some memory would be quite cool um, maybe an azrock collab as well for am5 give you a bit more of an upgrade path I know they did one for i think it was z690 so the intel side so if you're on that side of the, the fence then you can already get a um, razor edition motherboard for that one but certainly an am5 would be welcome i think that's everything that i want to cover in this video i do hope you've enjoyed watching and a big thank you of course to razor for sending all of this out for me to look at i really do appreciate it it's obviously a lot of money's worth um, it did take me longer than i wanted to to get this video done so i do apologize for that but i hope they uh, feel that the way has been worth it because i think it's turned out pretty good pricing and availability and all that stuff will be in the description if you want to pick up any parts you've seen leave a comment let me know what you think in the comments box any questions you might have as well but that's it for this one thank you all for watching get subscribed and dig the bell so you don't miss any future content i'm thinking maybe an all razor gaming setup might be quite cool get the monster in some peripherals so yeah get ready for that thank you all for watching i'm waffling on now and I'll see you all in the next one.